When a helicopter crew and their passengers are faced with aircraft failure, they cannot bail out successfully as a means of escape. A study was made of all Navy and Marine helicopter accidents that involved a critical injury or fatality from 1952 to 1962. The study indicated that a majority of these accident victims could have been saved if an in-flight escape system had been provided. As a solution to this situation, made more important by the increased employment of helicopters, the Naval Air Systems Command established a program to demonstrate the feasibility of the fuselage escape capsule concept as applied to helicopters. Let us illustrate the fuselage escape capsule concept by first adding the aircraft modifications in green to this drawing of the UH-25B helicopter. Basically, the fuselage escape capsule concept entails two major events. The first is the severance and the separation of the occupied portion of the fuselage, hereafter called the capsule. The final event is the deployment of ultra-fast opening parachutes to provide successful recovery of the capsule. The Naval Weapons Laboratory at Dahlgren, Virginia would design, develop, and test a ballistic system for the separation and recovery of an escape capsule. In addition, they were to support other activities engaged in the design of the recovery subsystem and flight tests. The UH-25B helicopter was used as the test vehicle. Aircraft modifications consisted of hard points, forward and aft, to accommodate the sling harness to which the four parachutes would be attached. The forces created by the parachute's opening necessitated this. Canisters to house the four ultra-fast opening parachutes. energy absorption pads to help absorb the initial impact of the capsule striking the earth. Rocket assemblies to accommodate the rockets that will jettison the unoccupied portion of the fuselage, ensuring positive separation. And finally, installation of a bulkhead to maintain capsule structural integrity throughout the recovery phase. The proposed system to be developed by the Naval Weapons Laboratory was to provide the solution to five problem areas. A ballistic initiator and energy transfer system. Severance of the fuselage and aircraft controls. Positive separation between the fuselage sections. Severance of the blades and rotors. And deployment of the parachutes. First, let's consider the ballistic initiator and energy transfer system. This system will initiate the sequence of events that will result in an escape capsule. For test purposes, an electrical solenoid is used as a means of initiating the ballistic system. Operationally, this system can be operated manually simply by removing the solenoid. Electrical energy is used to actuate the firing solenoid, which in turn initiates the ballistic actuator and train interrupter. When in the arm position, the ballistic actuator and train interrupter transfers energy to the 16-port distribution manifold by means of two confined detonating cord leads. These leads are two grains per foot CH6 loaded. The 16-port distribution manifold provides confined detonating cord energy transfer to all components of the ballistic system. Severance of the fuselage will minimize the weight of the capsule. Severance of all components passing through the plane of separation must be complete, but without jeopardy to the occupants. Cutting of the fuselage skin is accomplished 
by using a continuous length, approximately 18 feet, of 20 grain per foot aluminum sheathed linear shaped charge. This cutaway model shows how the linear shaped charge is encased in a low density energy absorption material and held in place by a nine ply fiberglass housing. The combination of energy absorption material and fiberglass housing prevents any fragments or backblast entering the capsule. A linear shaped charge also severs the rotor shaft. Conical shaped charges are used at each of the four longerons. The aircraft controls, wiring and hydraulic lines are severed by explosively driven guillotines. Essentially, energy is transferred from the 16 port manifold to the guillotine circuits. Detonation of the end probes drive the guillotine blade through the target to the anvil. Years of experience in the application of linear shaped charges are reflected by a successful initial test. Positive separation between the fuselage sections must be accomplished in a manner that forbids interference to the deployment of the ultra-fast opening parachutes. Separation is provided by two modified catapult rocket motors of 1,100 pound seconds impulse each. These rockets are mounted aft on the port and starboard sides of the fuselage section. Detonation of the confined detonating cord terminal probe detonates a donor charge in the through bulkhead rocket initiator. The detonation shock wave is transmitted through a 122,000 steel bulkhead and initiates a booster charge. This provides ignition for the rocket. The bulkhead remains intact and sealed throughout the rocket thrust phase. This tie-down test, photographed through a mirror, prove that the rockets would provide sufficient thrust to ensure positive separation between the capsule and aft section of the fuselage. The explosive charge must provide sufficient force for severance, but pressures within the capsule cannot exceed human tolerances. Two confined detonating cord leads initiate the stationary linear shaped charge ring. The explosive charge severs the shaft and transfers energy across an air gap to a rotating member. The explosive train is continued to two explosive devices on the hub, which severs two of the rotor blades. The third blade remains attached to the severed hub and shaft. The forces generated by the rotating blades carries them clear of the capsule. Watch this high speed study. Deployment of the parachutes is delayed for six tenths of a second to allow the severed sections of the aircraft to clear the parachute deployment zone. Deployment of the parachutes is accomplished in this manner. Detonation of the confined detonation cord terminal probes explosively drive a firing pin, which in turn initiates a percussion fire delay cartridge. The pressure generated is transmitted by means of a Y block and two 40 inch high pressure hoses to the firing pins of the two percussion fired actuator cartridges. The ultra fast opening parachutes actuator cartridges deploy the four parachutes which provide a capsule terminal velocity of 33 feet per second. Following individual component study, design, fabrication, and testing, the Naval Weapons Laboratory conducted a series of tie-down tests to demonstrate the results of their efforts. Full system tie-down tests facilitated 
both instrumentation of the tests and recovery of the severed portions. To realize the rapid response of the escape system, watch this event as it occurred in actual time. This high-speed camera view allows a more detailed study of the events as they occur. During each of the tests, the helicopter was permitted to develop sufficient power to simulate the hovering mode. This system is designed to prohibit shrapnel from entering the capsule. Notice that the blades are thrown clear of the capsule before the parachutes are ejected. Watch the parachutes. You will see the flash from the ballistic devices which open them. Notice also that the ultra-fast opening parachutes become fully deployed even in this static test. These static tests assured our engineers that overpressure inside the capsule did not exceed one PSI. No fragments entered the capsule and the entire ballistic system was compatible and would function as required. During the drop tests, the capsule was suspended 75 feet beneath the lift helicopter, hovering at an altitude of 1,000 feet. The capsule was permitted to fall 60 feet before the parachutes were ejected. This delay prevented possible entanglement of the parachutes with the suspension cable and permitted them to open free from the downwash of the lift helicopter. In an operational system, the capsule would drop only six feet before ejection of the parachutes. The capsule's descent rate is 33 feet per second. A manned parachute system has a descent rate of about 20 feet per second. This crush pad was used during testing. However, in an operational system, energy absorbing seats would be used to provide a soft impact for the occupants. The drop tests concluded that the capsule could be parachuted to earth without damage from parachute opening shock or ground impact. On the 31st of March, 1966, the Naval Weapons Laboratory conducted this remote controlled drone test at the Naval Aerospace Recovery Facility. Watch this dynamic scene. A series of tests were conducted at various helicopter attitudes and speeds, including hovering. This system will perform successfully at all altitudes above 100 feet. Under direction of the Naval Air Systems Command, the Naval Weapons Laboratory at Dahlgren, Virginia, has demonstrated the feasibility of their ballistic system for the separation and recovery of a helicopter escape capsule. <laughs>